Welcome back, welcome back. Saffron Burrows is a Hollywood star and a former model. She starred in a range of films from Hollywood blockbusters to small independent productions. But she's also a long-time socialist and political activist. She joins me now to talk about acting, politics, and her latest film, The Bank Job, currently on release all around the world. The film is based on a real-life bank robbery that took place in London in 1971. Here's the trailer from it right now. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, Terry. We can't pass it up. We are not bank robbers. Maybe that's why we could get away with it. Put everything in a bag and let's go. These last night we're trying to home in on a 300,000 pound bank rate. 300 grand? More like three million. There it was, the trailer with, uh, with in fact, uh, the scenes, different scenes from the movie. And now it's our joy to switch to Saffron in Los Angeles. Saffron, welcome. Welcome. Thank you, David. And uh, that looks a very active and exciting film. But the story also is very exciting, isn't it? It's a real life story, isn't it? And you've you've stuck to the facts, haven't you? We have pretty much stuck to the facts. Roger Donaldson, the filmmaker, was um, very keen to, um, as closely as possible, stick to what we knew of, of the bank robbery that took place in 71. So, um, for example, when, um, when the gang, as it were, are involved in, um, in tunnelling beneath um, several stores to get to the bank, there's um, walkie-talkie transmissions between them and their lookout that, uh, that exist in police records. And um, even those sort of transmissions are verbatim in our story, uh, along with a lot of other detail. Uh, the size of the tunnel, the, um, the sort of makeup of the group of people who actually executed the robbery. And we did have one of the men who was involved um, sort of quite closely um, on the production as an advisor. One of them who was involved so a rather in... rather unusual circumstance. Involved in actively breaking the law, you mean? I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And what's the part... I mean, one of the... One of... <laughs> yeah. One of the taglines for the film was very much that the thieves are the most innocent people of all. And um, I think when you see the film, you'll see that that, that does indeed unfold. Um. <laughs> that, the, um, that the powers that be within Whitehall are perhaps the, the ones who are, um, are slightly more duplicitous than the thieves themselves. And in terms of the story, th this thing that's so fascinating here, that the real-life bank job, the, the files on that are sealed until... 2054 normally it's 30 years maximum why is that is that because it's thought that there was a royal involvement that's being covered up I think um, we're suggesting that there's a royal involvement absolutely um, uh, alongside uh, Michael X the the black power leader who was a follower of Malcolm X his files are sealed until that date that you mentioned as well as um, a number of figures like John Lennon his files are sealed for that long too and um, I think um, there's a suggestion that there's a, there was some potent material on a member of the royal family and also um, uh, potent stuff about you know members of the aristocracy which of course wouldn't resonate as much as as much as the particular royal no. the royal material does no, but, um, I think that's it, it, I mean it's a date in time that is um, suitably far in the future that you have to think there's something extraordinary that, that's being hidden. And in terms of this, this whole uh, fascinating um, career you've had, it looks as though your childhood, you know, really picked you out mm. to be a politician almost, or a socialist politician or something like that. Are you still as left-wing now as you were when you were 18? I think I am. Um, I mean, I, uh, one has certain heroes that remain, remain in my mind as, as people I, I admire greatly. Uh, others have fallen in the time since I was 18. Um, but there are certainly figures in the world now who, who I would like to see in a more prominent position. Um, Ségolène Royal comes to mind in France. And, um, you know, there are, there are sort of systems of social democracy that I admire more than others, let's say. Um, undoubtedly, the um, celebration of the welfare state and um, 
and uh, a, a public education service and all of the things that I hold dear um, as, as a very much a part of British life, the more I travel, the more I see how crucial they are. And, that, um, and the idea that we're in a community, we all exist in, in a community and we're responsible for each other, that's very much uh, still part of who I, who I am. Being in America now at the time of the election is fascinating because it's a sort of time of hope here for a moment and they're clearly the, the democratic front runners are trying to construct the possibility of a health service that would be, you know, health for all here. So there are some radical things happening which are perhaps exciting. In terms of the uh, Democrats and so on, you've, you've said that you've been close mm -hmm. and friendly with Bill Clinton and you said here once that, uh, I think, joking I think probably, that you, you fancy Hillary. <laughs> I was 21 being very provocative. <laughs> <laughs> when you I were thought it was more interesting than saying Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was, because otherwise we probably wouldn't have mentioned it. But what would you like to do next? I mean, would you like to do the politics thing um, or the acting thing? You don't want to go back to the modelling thing, I'm sure. No, I, I had to stop modelling when I was 20, David, because um, in Britain, quite rightly, um, the acting profession is a serious one and um, one that you must train in. And, and I, think, um, I think actually the, the sort of stepping outside of yourself that, that modelling requires, the sort of seeing of yourself from, a, from another point of view, is not particularly healthy for anyone in any walk of life. I'd, I wouldn't send my daughter off into that world, I must say. So um, it didn't suit me, that world at all. Uh, although I, I, I had some extraordinary experiences in it. Um, but I did have to stop at 20 when I started making films quite seriously. And um, under the advice of others, I stopped. And, um, and I'm now 35. So it's been a while since I was anywhere near a catwalk or anything. Yeah. So uh, it was very much in my youth. Thank you so much for joining us, Saffron. And we've really appreciated having you with us. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Saffron there. After the break, more on the American election. We had some there. More on the American election with a leading Republican.